Okay, moving on in chapter five, we're in the last section here, um, part four, language development. So let's take a look um, at what we know about language development and how that happens in infancy. All right, now early vocalizations, this is a big deal. Um, and if you want to follow along, you can look at um, table 5.2 in your book on page 107. Um, and it's on the next slide here. Um, but we can, you can take a look at it in your book as well. Now, um, in this uh, period, right after infancy, um, children begin to develop language. Now, um, it's not as rapid as physical growth. It does take um, some time. Um, but they become, if you think about it, infants become, like your book says, creatures who have no language at all to being little people who understand what you're saying. Um, and once they learn to speak, seem to do it nonstop, all right? So where does this begin? Well, it begins with what are known as pre-linguistic vocalizations. Um, now, these don't represent objects or actions or anything. They're just simply noise, um, simply messages. Um, so we can, obviously infants do things like crying, but they also do what's called cooing. Um, and these are vowel-like sounds and they might reflect feelings of happiness or excitement, something positive. Um, babbling, now babbling is what happens, those first kinds of sounds that um, infants make that actually start to sound like speech. They sound like syllables. They sound like words. They're not words yet, but they're, they're the beginnings of them. And then um, a couple other things. Um, echolalia starts to happen in this stage. Echolalia um, is where um, the infant will repeat words or sounds over and over and over and over and over. Um, and then lastly, intonation. The intonation is really interesting. Um, this is when infants um, begin to use intonation or in, begin to use pitches, various levels to communicate their message. So they're not really saying words, um, but they're using intonation to express what they mean or what they're feeling. So sometimes if you notice um, in adult speech, when we ask a question, our voice goes up at the end. So if we say something like, do you understand? Our voice, our pitch goes up at the end. So infants might copy that, that intonation. And so when they may not actually be using the words to convey the message they're trying to send, they might um, use those tones, those pitches, those changes in pitches to indicate intent. All right, here we go. You can see here, we're not gonna go over all of these. These are some of the different mild, like mild, milestones in language development. So birth to tell, two weeks, we start to cry less. We start to um, coo, um, have squealing and gurgling. Um, we'll start to begin to smile to, when uh, we're talked to and when we're acknowledged. Uh, if we bump up to six months, cooing now changes to single syllable babbling. Um, syllables like ma, mu, da, or di. Um, if we skip ahead six more months, we have identical sound sequences that are repeated more often. Things like mama and dada seem to um, uh, start to begin to be said. Um, we start to be able to understand words and requests. Um, six months after that, we've got a vocabulary of 30 to 50 words, or 3 to 50 words already. Um, start to have spontaneous two-word utterances. We'll talk a little bit about this more. And at 24 months to two years, we have a vocab of 50 words naming everything in the environment and clear efforts to communicate with others. Now, how does that vo vocabulary develop? All right, well, there's two kinds of vocabulary that happen. Um, we have what's called receptive vocabulary and expressive vocabulary. Now, receptive vocabulary are the number of words that we understand. So words I say to you that you understand. Um, now, receptive vocabulary generally outpaces expressive vocabulary. Now, expressive vocabulary are the words that we, we ourselves use to convey ideas or, or we, to communicate. So the words, at least early on, we understand a lot more words. A lot, we have a lot larger receptive vocabulary than we do our expressive vocabulary. Um, 
your book talks about in one study, um, they looked at 12 months old and they could speak an average of 13 words, but they comprehended the meaning of 84. So while their expressive language was limited, their recept receptive was much, much greater. Now, um, first words. Uh, first words are typically not clear. Um, usually spoken between the ages of 11 to 13 months, um, maybe one or two syllables. Um, lots of times the dada is a, is a good first word for a lot of kids. Ball happened to be one of my daughter's uh, first words. But once that word hits, um, between 18 months then and 22 months, there is a huge growth. Um, in the level of communication, a huge growth in the level of vocabulary. All right, when vocab, moving on then with vocabulary still, um, as our vocabulary develops, we start to develop um, things like syllables. Um, so, pardon me, syllables. Um, start to be able to um, be tied together and then be turned into um, larger expressions. Um, more than half of the children's first words uh, make up general nominals and specific nominals. Um, general nominals are similar to nouns, and they include the names of classes of objects like car, ball, doggy, cat, boy, girl. Specific nominals are proper nouns, and those are things like daddy, rover, um, words expressing particular things, particular people. Um, between 18 and 22 months, then again, an explosion in vocabulary. Um, vocabulary can increase from 50 to more than 300 words. Um, and as vocabulary develops, we start to notice this phenomenon called overextension. Now, overextension um, is that when we, we try to talk about more than we have uh, words for. Um, so these are things like, um, you know, um, ideas. Oh, let me think. That... Um, <laughs> All right, well, let's just take a look at your book. Um, in a study by Eve Clark, um, she provided an example of the word mui, um, in which a child originally used to designate the, uh, the object of the moon, right? So when she meant moon, she said mui. Um, but eventually, she overextended, the, the child did, um, that word mui to mean anything that was round, like the letter O, like a cookie, like a cake, like a plate, like a ball. All of those things were mooey because she didn't quite yet have the words for those things. So because the moon was similar um, to, it was a round object and similar in that way to other round objects, not only was the moon mooey, but everything else was mooey as well. All right, after vocabulary, um, we also start to develop sentences. Now, when we start to develop sentences, typically our sentences are pretty short, um, very brief. One word utterances, but they can express a complete idea. Um, so your book talks about an example of telegraphic speech, something like Home Tuesday. So if a little one says to you, Home Tuesday, they might mean, I'm going home on Tuesday, or I expect to be home on Tuesday, or are we going home on Tuesday? So these, that two-word utterance can have a lot of meaning. Now, when we're looking at um, sentences, one of the things we look at in sentence development is the mean length of utterance. Um, and the mean length of utterance, also known as the MLU. Now, in your book on page um, 109, figure 5.5, and let me just skip ahead here. This is a chart of an MLU of three children. And you can see as they increase in age, their number of MLUs increases, all right? So and, um, the MLU consists of the average number of morphemes 
or the smallest unit of meaning in a language. So for example, walked is, the word walked is two morphemes. Um, the word walk in and of itself, the root word, which is a verb, and then ed, when we tack ed onto that, that evolves walk into walked, and we go from one morpheme to two. And so as we get older, um, our MLUs increase rapidly. So again, if we take a look at the next page, we can look at Lynn, Victor, and Sarah. And um, if we look at their age in months, um, well, we can see Lynn starts out with about one, at 18 months, with about 1.5 um, morphemes, one and a half morphemes. Um, and as he gets to, in six months, he's increased to four, four morphemes, or four MLUs. Um, if we look at um, Sarah and Victor, although they're different and Victor ends up with more months, their rate of growth is, is fairly similar. They started out um, at age 28 months here. If we look, and that's at two, um, about 26, 27, 28 months, somewhere around there right around the second birthday. They, their MLUs are um, about two. And as they get to 50 months old, um, we're looking at MLUs for Victor off the chart, and even Sarah, but Victor especially way off the chart. So as we get older, those MLUs start to increase. Um, now, when we're looking at development of sentences, um, there are some important things that we need to take a look at. One of those things is hollow phrases. Now, hollow phrases um, are one-word utterances, single words that are used to express complex meaning. Uh, for example, um, if a child says mama, um, it might mean mama's going there, or there goes mama, or here comes mama, or come here mama. All right, hollow phrases are often accompanied by um, gestures um, that help reinforce what the child is saying, help to add context. Okay, sorry, skipped ahead there a little bit. Um, we talked about telegraphic speech a little bit earlier, but just to bring home um, the idea with telegraphic speech, usually um, the hollow phrases then. Um, turn into telegraphic speech, which become two-word sentences, um, things like that ball, where words are implied, like the word is, the word a, um, instead of that is a ball. We understand the child means when they say that ball, it, they are meaning that is a ball. And so that shows um, that they're, they're implying syntax. They're implying the words is and ah into that um, phrase, even though they don't have the words or they don't include the words, syntax is implied, which is an important step um, for the development of larger sentences, larger vocabularies, things like that. Um, now we're going to move on in the next little section to theories of language development, but I think we're going to go ahead and split uh, this section up into two to make our little chunk um, a little bit more manageable. So make sure you look at the next section or the next uh, video as well that will go on to finish this section on language development.